Hello and welcome to Covenant Hospital. I am Roger Spann. I serve on the Volunteer Advisory Board as the Vice Chair. Our Advisory Board sponsors the Tree of Love program. Uh, I also serve on what is called PFAC, which is the Parent and Family Advisory Council. I am fortunate enough to be the co-chair where we work to try to improve patient satisfaction here at Covenant. Many volunteers are involved in the uh, programs at Covenant and in the various uh, work that goes on here. One of the things that we do is we attempt to raise funds for a variety of things that otherwise would not be funded here at Covenant. One of those is our annual Tree of Love, which always takes place every year in December. We'd like to welcome all of our viewers to this special video. Hope that you are blessed by it and that you will understand further just why we are here and what we are doing. The purpose of Tree of Love is to allow all of our employees and residents in our community an opportunity to honor and remember their loved ones who may have passed away during the previous year. Funds that we raise through this program are used uh, for the Family Comfort Fund, which buys snacks, treats, and so on for families who may be spending uh, time with their loved ones who are in their last hours of life. We believe this is a very important uh, purpose for this money. When they are hospitalized in their last stages of life, we at Covenant want to show our support and our love for these families. This year, we have received an overwhelming support from our community for our Tree of Law program. At this point, we have raised almost $4,500 for the Family Comfort Fund. That is going to help us to fund uh, this program for some time to come. All of the donors to this fund for this year will receive a beautiful personalized ornament and they can display that ornament on their Christmas tree as a memorial to their loved one that is not with them at this time of the year. We're very happy to have with us today Chaplain Julie Winkleplatt, who is going to come and share with us uh, some thoughts on this time of the year and uh, what families may be going through. Hello, I'm Chaplain Julie Winkleplek, and I'm so pleased to be with you here today to talk about the Tree of Love. I'm going to read a passage from Isaiah 40. This is a traditional Advent passage that tells of the coming Messiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Advent is a time of waiting and watching and hoping. It's this suspended animation as we wait to celebrate Christmas, as we wait again for the coming of Jesus. 2020 is a year where we especially need that hope. We need that promise that God is with us, that there is something better coming. 2020 for many has been a quagmire of chaos and grief. As we endure pandemic and isolation, for those of us who live alone, you may go days and days without seeing another human being. And for the rest of us, we're in our little bubbles of our families. Here at Covenant, we break those bubbles as we care for our patients and we know the chaos that 
has been reigning throughout our culture this year. My hope is that we may find the divine in each other and in our traditions, even as those traditions are thrown up in the wind a little bit and we have to remake them. I had the joy of making cookies last week with my sister and my niece, and it was different. We all wore masks. We um, tried not to get too close to each other in the kitchen. We did things differently because of the pandemic that we are enduring. And yet our grandma was still there in the room with us. I love making these Christmas cookies and remembering our grandma. And for my niece, who of course wasn't around when that grandma was, to tell those family stories and to pass on that through the generations. This is a time where we may have empty spaces at our table. We remember those who have gone before us. We remember our beloved dead. No that you are not alone. Know that it will get better, that we will come through this period, and again, know that the Messiah is coming. The mouth of the Lord has spoken it, and God's promise is true. May I pray? O oh Lord our God, we shout for joy at the nearness of your birth. Renew us with your love, and send us out into the world to share the good news of Christ's advent. Amen. Hello, I'm Carol Cottrell, Director of Covenant Healthcare Foundation, and I wanna welcome you to our annual Tree of Love ceremony. You've already heard from our good friend, Roger Spann from the volunteer organization and from our chaplain. I'd like to share a few words with you this afternoon. As you all know, this year has been a highly unusual year We've all dealt with things that are not typical in our lives, whether it was a pandemic or it was flooding, children working from home rather than being in school. Lots of changes have taken place. We can focus on that or we can focus on the positives, the opportunity to spend more time with family, the opportunity to look at things in a different light, the opportunity to appreciate the simple things at a simple pace, as opposed to constantly running, traveling, hurrying from here to there, trying to get children to their sporting events, their dance classes, trying to get dad to his business meetings, mom to her meetings. It's time for us to sit back, take a moment and reflect on those positive things and maybe hearken back to a simpler time. All that leads me to think of somebody that I'm sure you're familiar with, Mr. Rogers. We all remember Fred Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be my neighbor? One of my favorite stories from Christmas, and I have a number of them. One of my favorite stories is the Christmas Carol. Another is the night before Christmas. But my probably most favorite Christmas story of, of all time is not a story that's very well known to many people. And yet I thought in this particular Christmas season, more than any other, it might be the year that I actually shared my favorite Christmas story with you because it reminds me so much of appreciating the simple things in life and Mr. Rogers. And so if you will indulge me, I'm going to read you my favorite Christmas story. It's called Angel Pig. Whoever would have thought of that for a Christmas title, Angel Pig and the Hidden Christmas. So just sit back, pretend that you're sitting in your child's first grade classroom or your grandchild's first grade classroom or your own first grade classroom and just enjoy. Tis the day before Christmas. The house is a flutter. The pigs are a buzz cleaning up all the clutter. They're sweeping and washing and waxing the floors. They're dusting the bookshelves and polishing doors. They hike to the attic up seven steps, steep flights to look for the candles, the wreaths and the lights. But the balls are in pieces. The tinsel is tangled. Their stockings have holes and their old tree is mangled. So the piggies assemble a long Christmas list. They check it again to see what they've missed. And when they are ready, 
they trudge through the snow, but the one with the wallet is knee deep in woe. We don't have the money to buy any gifts. We're fresh out of cash. No buts, ands, or ifs. We'll have to miss out on this once a year day. We haven't the credit or incoming pay. We used to have savings. Oh, where did it go? We spent them, I guess. On what? I don't know. We forgot to remember that Christmas was near and now the big day is about to be here. The pigs were despondent. Some started to bawl and now we can't go to the outlets and mall to buy jeans and sneakers with fancy brand names and TVs and CDs and video games. They checked every pocket without much success. They dug for lost quarters. They made a big mess. Christmas seemed finished before it began. The pigs had no money, no hope of a plan. As the piggies sat silent in sadness and gloom, a mysterious spirit invaded the room. A glittery mist drifted down from above. The feeling it brought them was something like love. You think you need money? You don't, said a voice. You just need each other and time to rejoice. The pigs peered around and then up in the air, an angel pig hovered above the blue chair. Christmas, Christmas means many and various things, singing and laughing and green paper rings, homemade mint candies and fresh eggnog too, striped shortbread cookies and caramel goo. Create your own Christmas from what is right here with boxes and crayons and cake baking gear. Get out your toolbox, there are toys to be built. Cut up old clothes, stitch a colorful quilt. Giving and sharing and just helping out, that is what Christmas is really about. Look all around you, that's where you should start. You'll find the best giving is done with your heart. Angel Pig's message was simple and clear. The magic of Christmas was merrily near. The pigs dug up paint sets and found colored clay. They molded a vase and a festive red tray. They rooted in closets and under beds too, searching for fabric and scissors and glue. With pipe cleaners, markers, and small shiny stars, they made pencil holders and fat cookie jars. They brought up some poems, which they wrote down in books, then went to the kitchen and turned into cooks. They baked gingerbread piggies and macaroon cats, butterscotch reindeer and chocolate chip hats. As they covered their gifts in potato print wrapping, some of the pigs began dozing and napping. The rest spied the clock, 11.03, they had less than an hour to search for a tree. Everyone stirred, including the mouse, to find a tree that would fit in the house. But when they stepped out in the glistening snow, they noticed an evergreen, brightly aglow. A tree they had hurried past many a time looked suddenly radiant, festive, sublime. On bushy green branches, ice gleamed in the night. The pigs stood in awe and beheld the new sight. The cardinals, the blue jays, and even the crows trimmed the tree with red berries, with ribbons and bows. One of the pigs made a bowl of mulled cider, while other pigs caroled and chorused beside her. This is a Christmas we'll never forget. It's only begun, it's not over yet. There'll be more songs tomorrow and gifts and great food to add to our bountiful holiday mood. Good night, get some rest, happy Christmas to you. And with that, Angel Pig swiftly vanished from view. The piggies all beamed and emitted with cheer. The best Christmas of all had been hiding right here. Christmas isn't gifts. It's not going places. It's enjoying what you have. It's appreciating those that we've had who are no longer with us. We don't celebrate what we've lost. We celebrate what we had and celebrate we had that time together. So I implore you, as you look at Christmas, it's okay to reflect and be sad about what you've lost, but it's more important to celebrate the joy you enjoyed with that person. It doesn't have to be something magnificent. It doesn't have to be something special and spectacular that you do. 
It just has to be heartfelt, sincere. And so my hope for all of you is that as you celebrate the holiday season, you're able to remember with fondness and with great love those you have lost and look happily towards the promise of tomorrow. Merry Christmas. I would like to express a special appreciation for the many members in our community, and that would include everyone in the Great Lakes Bay region for their support of our Family Comfort Fund. And also a special thank you to the Covenant Volunteers for their willingness to work and to support our hospital in doing these special projects. The Tree of Love is a project that will last all the way through the year as we continue to help out families during some of the most difficult times of uh, the year ahead. All of you that are watching today, we want to wish you a very, very special holiday time Hopefully you will remember the story of the pig and what it's all about. There are so many things that we have to be thankful for. And as Carol reminded us, we will reflect upon those that we have lost, but we will also go forth with a joy, a peace, a satisfaction, a sense of calmness. It's been a rough year. 2021 is ahead, and let's look forward to great and wonderful things. Thank you to this great community and this great hospital.